Every year, between the months of October and March, the wetlands of Mumbai are brought to life by the arrival of a flamboyant seasonal visitor. Flamingos. Thousands descend to the city and its outskirts between their breeding season to feed on their diet of crustaceans, aquatic plants and the reason behind their pink colour, the blue-green algae. The big white ones are the greater flamingo, the largest known flamingo species that make their way from southern Europe, Africa, the Indian subcontinent and the Middle East. The smaller pink ones are the indigenous lesser flamingos who make their way from Kutch in Gujarat and the Sambar Lake in Rajasthan to eat this buffet of omnivorous diet the mud flats have to offer. Along with them come the juvenile ones, covered in grey fluffy down feathers. For some, it is their first journey from miles away. Big in case of lesser flamingo is uh, reddish black and in case of greater flamingo it's pink with a black tip. Uh, and also pink color varies in bo both the species. So that is the main difference. Rahul Khot works with the Bombay Natural History Society, a non-government wildlife research organization, one of the oldest and largest in India. In 2017, the BNHS decided to launch a 10 year long ecological monitoring of these birds and their habitat. So in past, all these numbers are in between 10,000 to 50,000, okay? Because there is no systematic counting or, uh, you know, is done. Uh, since last two years, we are actually uh, doing that exercise where BNHS team is actually going monthly into the uh, Thane Creek and systematically counting flamingos from all these 20 and 20 kilometer banks, east and west bank. And um, since uh, we started this in 2018 um, uh, September, so 2018 September to 2018 December, the numbers were around 45,000. In January 2019, the number went uh, threefold and we recorded 1,20,000 flamingos. And in again at March 2019, we recorded around uh, 1,34,000 flamingos. So that is the highest number uh, so far recorded from uh, Mumbai. Mumbai's urban rush might seem anti-nature, but the city has been known to host the second largest population of flamingos after Kutch in India. A migration that is known to have started back in the 80s. But over the last year or so, this alarming threefold increase has left conservationists and ornithologists wonder what is suddenly bringing these birds here in such large numbers. Because there are good feeding grounds, this Thane Creek, there are a lot and lot of mud flats which are open and replenish every time by the tide. So every time they have this good four or five hours, low tide twice a day, where mud flats are all exposed, a lot of food, uh, the mollusk and the crustaceans and blue green algae which is available and they just uh, feed here. And basically what we have uh, find, found out so far, uh, the, the their number or congregation number is depend upon the area of the mud flat. The larger area, more congregation. The smaller mud flats you will see sm you know, uh, less number of flamingos. So they need large uh, mud flats for feeding, basically. Interestingly, the Thane Creek also happens to be an enormous dumping ground for untreated domestic sewage and industrial effluents. Some conservationists believe Mumbai's growing population is actually helping these birds since sewage promotes the biological growth of blue-green algae, which in turn is food for flamingos. Wildlife photographer and conservationist Sujay Monga, who's been following these birds since their first arrival, calls this phenomenon edge nature. 
a double-edged sword where emerging between humans and the wilderness proves to be particularly beneficial for certain species. So one of the reasons for that, the expansion of the flamingo in the Mumbai region along the Thane Creek may have been the refineries themselves, you know, along Mahul, which, which release warm water. And being very food specific, I mean, they are very sort of restricted in their diet, you know, on algal matter primarily, especially the lesser flamingo and even the greater to an extent, I mean, even though it has a little variable sort of diet yet, so the creeks may have been just perfectly polluted as I say, you know, just sort of the perfect warmth is there in the waters because that is what is conducive to flamingos and a huge numbers of a huge congregations of other weeders also congregating. Flamingos have a very specific requirement of microorganisms in their diet, which they can filter and digest. As a species, they are known to be highly tolerant. If you just so Google, if you see the literature, the largest congregation of bird was reported from, uh, you know, places which are actually soda ash lakes, basically, which are highly, highly, uh, you know, large amount of uh, soda ash and, you know, nothing can grow except algae and even birds easily, you know, they, they are happy in that. So, though they are pollution tolerant bird, but there is a caution, you know, beyond a certain level, they won't be able to survive. So what we are doing through this study also, we are trying to understand their food and what is the pollution levels in different tropics or different, uh, uh, you know, niche. So we will get a, uh, you know, a correlation from water to bird, how much accumulation or bioaccumulation of heavy metal is happening, for example and how much they can tolerate and if these things continue what will happen of course bad things will happen because after a certain uh, level they won't be able to survive so it, before it's too late we have to advise governments all the decision ma making agencies which are working in this mmr region you know to make the habitat suitable for the flamingos Along with pollution levels is the impending issue of habitat protection. The creeks and rivers that form Mumbai's wetlands have been under siege of the city's growing needs. So if the wetlands completely disappeared, the story ends, right? I mean, there's nothing left for the waders and the flamingos. I mean, uh, waders and the, the flamingos and the other waders. So the, the primary point is saving the sites. Now, if we have lost such a huge amount all along the Uran belt and uh, if few sites such as the Seawood site, you know, which is in the news in the recent time, I mean, if they are to be lost of all things on earth to another golf course, I mean, that's, a, that's an absolute slap in the face of Mumbai, you know, to have a golf course in Navi Mumbai where one is there, which is highly underutilized and to have one more year over what is a fantastic bird rich wetland. Over the last two years, the BNHS has been looking at building a definitive data and knowledge base for these migratory birds, a long-term study without which it would be impossible to define trends. From studying birds in their habitats and in labs, to creating awareness drives, to tagging and ringing them for a population count, the organization is currently studying close to 70 to 80 migratory species of birds that will hopefully help them build a case to protect Mumbai's wetlands. That's what we are looking into. So we are trying to understand their ecology, their biology, their numbers, their migration. And we will put all this data into some statistical modeling. We will also uh, analyzing how all this landscape has changed over the past years, you know. If you see this entire landscape of Navi Mumbai, all this, uh, all this was like a wetland, mosaic of wetland and salt pans. Mumbai might seem to have become a current favourite for these gregarious birds, but the near impending imbalance brings along with it the fear of losing these feathered friends for good.